they only want to like keep everything to themselves. And I think they know if they invite me into these rooms, I'm going to be like, why y'all ain't got no black people? When I hustle up, I don't have a dime. I'm a gold mine. Good times and the bad times, they heavy on my mind. Tapered up, all them starch dying. Either way is mine. I feel fine, but everything around affect my vivid mind. Welcome to a Vivid Mind podcast, the official podcast for young and cultured brand. Um, on this podcast, we like to allow for our viewers and listeners to be enriched mentally, spiritually, and fiscally. You know, right now, I got my big bro on. I don't call people big bro. I'm just being honest with you. <laughs> Me either. I don't call people big bro. But <clears throat> you are actually a mentor. Yeah. You know, this man here, when I got started, gave me the most energy in regards to going for it yeah and the weird thing about him is he could have just stopped talking to me afterwards anytime i had a question you would tell me to come up to zoomies and just holler at you yeah and if you didn't see or hear from me for a while you would text me and ask me how's the brand going yeah and you don't even have to do that and i i say that's a testament to who you actually are. Yeah. You know, people are enamored by your brand, mm -hmm. but they don't know the man behind the brand. So I like to introduce my podcast people to the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Tony Davis. Thank you for sure for having me. Man, I'm excited about this one. I mean, I just, whenever people ask me for help, <clears throat> they need help. And it takes a lot to ask somebody for help mm -hmm. um, and actually like want the help. A lot of people want handouts and don't want actual mm -hmm. help and knowledge. And But you didn't come to me asking for manufacturers and certain things. You really just wanted to know how it really was to have a brand consistency and things like that. So for me, it was a no brainer. I just... Might as well check back in on you. I don't. Yeah. We didn't. I don't. I'm, I'm invested now. You put time. I put time into this. <laughs> I'm you know talking about saying? hours. <laughs> yeah, I put time into this now. I need to know what's going on with my investment. Yeah. I also need to check in with people because if I check in and you tell me you haven't done something, then we don't need to talk anymore. Mm. So I'm not just checking for them. I'm checking for me too. Wow. Because why would I waste my time with somebody who's not into their own project? Why would I be into their project if they're not? Yeah. So if you if you probably if you would have hit me back and been like, well, I haven't done nothing for the last month, I'd have been like, okay, keep it up. I would have never responded to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because there's just no point in me wasting my time with somebody else's project. Yeah, time is money. Yeah, you know, and I'm not one of those people where it's like there's not enough time in the day. 24 hours is plenty of time if you plan accordingly. Yes, you know, people are like, I need 40 hours. Well, why do you need 40 hours? There's just no reason for that for me. And, that, and everybody's mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. but I get my eight hours of sleep. I'm very organized. <coughs> I know what's going on every minute of my day. Yeah. Um, and so that's just kind of. So that's the part that, is that like your secret sauce to the secret? Probably. I'm very organized. And my staff can tell you, um, even Dylan's in here right now, I plan a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, because my account changes every day, up or down, depending mm -hmm. on sales. Yeah. One bad week, I might lose thirty grand. One good week, I might make a hundred grand. Wow! So it just doesn't matter. I mean, we talk about it all the time. Between nine stores and our expenses, we spend three million dollars on bills a year. So I can't waste time because between nine stores rent, nine stores utilities, the warehouse rent, clothes, payroll. Like I told you the other day, we spend twenty seven thousand dollars every single Thursday on payroll. It's one hundred eight thousand dollars a month yes. that I gotta spend. Not without a choice. Without a choice, not including utilities, rent. So I, I gotta be organized. If yeah. not, it could go away very, very fast. Yeah, I'm, I don't want this to go away very, very fast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this to go away until I'm ready for it to go away. What you say? Because you have done the anomaly thing, right? You have grabbed the herd culture of our city. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what it is about our people here. They 
they gravitate towards something and then they stick to it mm -hmm. and then like gum on a shoe when a rock show up they scrape off of that and mm -hmm. attach themselves to that but you have survived first of all you popped during the pandemic mm -hmm. you were already relevant prior to the pandemic but the actual bubble the boom of secret scientists and people knowing whenever i mentioned the brand that happened during the time when ain't nobody got no money tony getting money i just planned it out like i said planned. <laughs> like i literally so i had this number in my head that i wanted to make every single week mm -hmm. and so i was like they can't get to the mall i know that because i work at the mall mm -hmm. so people still need clothes and you also know mobile ain't gonna do right so right. i know people were active partying yeah they don't really care about COVID for real. Yeah. People people get online and say COVID this, COVID that. You didn't care about COVID during Mardi Gras. All right. You don't really care. <laughs> you only care about them eight hundred dollars they were giving out. Let's shut it down. Yeah. You want to shut it down for the money, not yeah. for the safety of the people. Let's just be realistic. Okay. So yeah. I knew they were going somewhere. And then on top of that, I knew they were about to start getting some money. Mm -hmm. They can't spend it in the mall. Mm -hmm. Like you said, our people, they gonna spend it. Yeah. Um, so I put a number in my head, I had a meet up like certain times, the Fusaklis on airport and university. You gotta meet me at this time. Yeah. Between four or five. Yeah. Trap out of my trunk. I made the goal that I wanted like seven, eight weeks in a row. By like the seventh or eighth week, I was making like triple what I wanted. Wow. And so I was just like, I got to like a point where I had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. My wife got pregnant. And so Zoomy said was going to give me a raise, a promotion and things like that. So we just made a decision. It was like, do we want to open up our own store or do we want to get the promotion for Zoomies? Mm -hmm. And I was like, we might as well just open up our own store. Um, nobody in Mobile had their own storefront. Yeah. Uh, of course, not in the mall because the yeah. mall is very expensive. Yeah. Um, and so I said, I want to do something that nobody has ever done before. And Boom. I did it. You know, I went wow. I went to BC Rain two weeks ago and did mock interviews. And this kid told me he thought that the brain had just started when we opened up at the mall. Mm. So there was still people that we weren't touching. Yeah. But now we've reached the masses, but there's still people that we aren't touching. That's true. Because uh, Mobile is a very niche market. So it's kind of like we're I like to call us the Atlanta of Alabama. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? However, we're still not Atlanta yet. Mm -hmm. And it, it has a lot to do with the culture down here. Nothing to do with the actual size of the city, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but before we go deep off into what happened, because I know they want to know what happened when you open the store. Uh, <clears throat> I want to play a game. Okay. And for my listeners, I know y'all <laughs> see me call to the side and clear my throat. Listen, it is sinus season. You dig? Yeah. <laughs> I took the Zyrtec this morning. I was going to take a Zyrtec every day. <laughs> <laughs> Every, every so single that's day. That's what it is. I got me some water right here, so you'll hear me hit some sips and all of that. But um, first game of the day. All right. Okay. It's called Dumb Questions for Smart People. Okay. You ready for this? Maybe. Right. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, which one I want to use on you? What's your favorite, favorite 90s song? Uh... Whoop, there it is. Whoop, stop playing. <laughs> nah, so my mom is like very, very religious and didn't let me listen to too much bad music growing up. Yeah. So she got me this random Mickey Mouse rap tape. Oh, and so I they, remember had, they had like all the rap songs, almost like the kids' bop. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But it was like Disney characters. Yeah. Man, I could still sing that word, word for word. That's yeah. <laughs> So interesting <laughs> fact about that song, bro. Uh, <clears throat> in the seventh grade, I randomly was watching MTV and they played it again and I instantly got obsessed with the song again mm -hmm. to the point where I went to school every day riding the bus listening to Whoop That It Is. Honestly, and if I had to say something like my, some of my cousins, they weren't on the same rules. If I had to pick another side, it was a uh, crucial conflict smoking on hay. Hey, in the middle of yeah. the bar. So that's yeah. true. That'll show yeah. you the uh, my spectrum of my music. Yeah, from, from Disney to Crucial Conflict. Okay, then. Yeah. All right. So, so another I'm, question. You hear the silence? That's called suspense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Do you think zombies? should move fast or slow and why uh 
Well, if, if, if I believed in zombies, I would say they should move, they should move slow and take their time. <laughs> to give you a chance There's to no get point away. in moving fast. I'm, like you said, I may not be able to get away. And then there's everybody's running from them anyway. There's yeah. going to be more people than zombies, so you're going to always <laughs> have your uh, your pick of the litter when it comes to biting somebody. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Somebody's going to you're going to always have somebody around you. And there's also crazy enough people that are going to try to approach you as well. So somebody going to always put something on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're so right. if zombies were here nowadays, people would be having them on Instagram all the time and you'd probably see somebody getting killed because they were stupid going towards the zombies. So, <laughs> so look, I'm close, I'm close. In I'm real close. life in real life nowadays people would probably go to the zombies instead of the zombies going to them. Dang. So you're gonna be deep on this part too? You asked me, <laughs> you asked me a question, I answered it. <laughs> all right, so <clears throat> excuse me, got one last question. Okay. All right. Who would win in a fight? Between Iron Man and Batman. I like Iron Man, but people don't really respect Batman. <laughs> what? He got more movies than anybody. Well, he's he's more marketable than anybody. He's okay. a, he's a he's got all the gadgets and the gimmicks and the cool stuff that other people don't have. Yeah. And he also has like realistic things that people feel like they can touch, like the Batmobile. I can't go put something in my chest and fly around like Iron Man. <laughs> but but you're saying now they built the suit, like there's yeah. people building action. And I'm also like, not big into like characters like that. I don't watch okay. a lot of those movies. Okay, I watch like First Forty Eight and Interventions. First of all, you live in First Forty Eight. Yeah. Why are you so watching like, that I, on I, TV? I watch, I watch First Forty Eight. I'm watching this new show, The Staircase, right now. Yeah, you know that that's I like a good suspense. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. I mean, the reason why we put the put them against each other, because honestly, they're the same character, just two different universes. You know, rich, billionaire. Tony takes advantage of the Playboy part. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, meanwhile, Bruce chooses to be melancholy. The new Batman, I ain't really get down with though. Really, I liked it. It was it was different. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like that guy as Batman. Okay, so a lot of people had a problem when he took the helmet off. Yeah, they was just like, I don't dig with him being Bruce, you know. But I mean, he was like, that was his second year being Batman. Yeah, I mean, it was cool. It just yeah. wasn't. Uh, I guess what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just I ain't, see, but that's what it is. I walked in not looking for nothing. Yeah, because I mean, after we just had Ben Affleck, I was just like. I don't know what we're going to do yeah. now. You know, the best Batman we ever had was Christian Bale. Mm -hmm. The weird thing about him was he talked like this. Yeah. You know, I was like, why is he doing that? I don't understand. But, you know, it was cool. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. All right. So, we're going to take him all the way back. Okay. People know the man who created the brand. They know your face. Mm -hmm. You know, they even kind of know the persona mm -hmm. that you have built around yourself you know but what no rather who is actually tony as a little kid what is he into who are his parents i mean i play i play uh sports i'm from a two-parent home my dad's an engineer my mom's a director of a school wait but a I, minute but wait a minute did this man just say he had a very intelligent black parent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very, very smart. Uh, to the point where they everybody here thinks I sold drugs before I did clothes because I'm so good at math. But it's only because my dad <laughs> it's only because my dad didn't let me use a calculator. Really? So he's like old school engineer, pencil and paper. Whenever he like tutored me in math, mm -hmm. no calculator was in it. I had to know the why to every single reason we did it. Really? So I can wow. like do numbers. Kel said I reminded him of that kid from uh What's that show on TV? Oh, Tommy on on Power. Yeah, that little kid that just spits out numbers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Kel said that's who I remind him of. But okay. it's only because of my dad. Yeah. Um, so what what hood are you from? Man, West Mobile. <laughs> that's my hood. Cottage okay. Hill Road. Okay, Cottage Hill uh, Road. Yeah, Cottage yeah, Hill yeah. and Chillingers, man. Yeah. Uh, it's when West Mobile was like starting to pop. Wasn't a lot of black That's when it was the dream there. side. Yeah, the dream to. side of town. Man, we used to want to uh, go over there until we did get over there. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but like I said, played sports from five to all the way through college. What you yeah. played? Baseball, football, dabbled in basketball a little bit. But I played uh, college baseball through Spring Hill. You still got it? 
I mean, yeah, I tell them we, that all the we time. We can hit the diamond. Yeah, well, they try, they tried. They're doing some softball league. I keep telling them I'm gonna go out there. I haven't been out there yet, but we'll see. That was my thing. That I was actually good at. I yeah. was good at baseball. I played first base, played right field. Yeah, you know, I was a designated hitter because the only thing I knew how to do was hit out. I didn't know how to hit inside. I couldn't yeah. control base hit. So uh, the coaches was a little PO'd with me. It's tough, and I mean that's another reason that we kind of want to start playing a little bit more is just to give like black kids a chance to see yeah baseball is cool it's the guarantee baseball is where the money is yeah I mean, basketball makes a lot of money for sure i yeah. just saw this thing that said if Harden signs a max contract last year the deal he's gonna be making 61 million and that's mm. a lot of money yeah but baseball's getting like 10 years 350. that's what i was finna say like, like start like, rookies are getting 30 million dollar contracts yeah. and it's guaranteed but the, the thing about baseball is you you got to really be good because you got to go single a double a triple a mm -hmm. you don't just get drafted and go to the pros kind of like how the nba is trying to do the g league yeah um but they like develop you into good players and you've got to survive and you ask you have to like be really good or you're not going to make it. Some people play double A their entire life and met, never make it to the big leagues. Mm. And so you just got to be good at your craft and practice your craft. And, and baseball is different. It's, yeah. it's not like action all day long. Mm -hmm. You've got to love baseball and understand there's like a game inside of the game to, to excel. You know, it's not like you might get a home run or something like that, but the average game might be 3-2 or, yeah. you know. Oh, I remember falling asleep on the bench because we out there so long. Yeah, you know, and so I went to Baker, and Baker's really, really good at baseball. So yes. we, we had to be focused. And that's another reason why I kind of stopped playing is my high school program just felt like it was more organized than my college program. Really? And so it just, it wasn't fun anymore. Okay. Uh, politics get involved and you just kind of like am I going to go pro? Mm -hmm. Probably not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did something else. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was, I was outside. Uh, soccer, kickball, throwing dirt at the houses they're just building, dirt wars, mm -hmm. roller hockey. I mean, luckily, I guess I'm blessed to live on that side of town Yeah. where like my friends that I was around, parents had a little money, so we actually had like seasons yeah. in our neighborhood, like yeah. hockey season, baseball wow. season. So like we had like hockey and you sticks. participated because y'all yeah. lived in the yeah, neighborhood. So we're all in the neighborhood. We had like ten of us put on our rollerblades, real like hockey sticks, and mm -hmm. playing like roller hockey and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then we go to baseball and play in somebody's backyard, and it was baseball season and stuff like that. So okay, it, it kind of. Opened me up, I guess, to a lot of things that a lot of people of our, our race don't get access to or yeah. didn't at that time. Yeah. Because it was super, super different, of course, 20 years ago. Yeah. Like you said, in West Mobile, it was just me in my neighborhood, you know. I was the only black guy on my baseball team from five to mm -hmm. even college, mm -hmm. you know. I had another guy that was in my wedding. He played baseball with me, and he would kind of play at West Side where I played at. But during school, it was just me, so. Yeah. So, I got a couple different angles I want to go with this because this is very interesting. Uh -huh. Because I, personally, being a designer, I see how it plays out in your style. Mm -hmm. But, you know, other people may not. Um, we'll go this. We'll go this way. What attributes do you feel like you gained from your parents? Um, timely. They're not late people at all. I'm really, really big on time. Mm -hmm. Um communication for sure we have like an open door policy where they can talk to me and i can talk to them it wasn't always like that mm -hmm. um i think i've kind of forced them to do that more than me because you know all black folks they don't really talk about it too too much you're right <laughs> <laughs> they keep a lot of stuff in you know like we need we need you know the black community needs more therapy and counseling but we'll talk about that later yeah um but honestly just being timely and actually caring uh my dad his, his two biggest quotes growing up was, how bad do you want it? And why do you want to play for the baseball team when you can own the baseball team? Wow. So, like, my dad always used to say, do you want to be the athlete or do you want to be the owner? Mm. And he was like, it's cool that you're okay at baseball, but you can be really good at math and school and economics because that's skills that you can learn. Everybody can't go on the baseball field and be good at it. But if you apply yourself, you can be good in the classroom and learn what you need to learn if you figure it out. So he was always like, you need to own the team. Mm -hmm. Don't play for the team. 
He said, your owner is paying that dude $50 million, but your owner's a billionaire. Who do you want to be? I so, want to be the billionaire. So the, my dad always taught me, don't play for the team, own the team. Yeah. Man, that's a great lesson, man. That's a great lesson. That explains a lot. I mean, it's, it's kind of that's what happened from I know we'll go into it, but that's yeah. what happened with Fly Times, the secret scientist. My parents were always like, why are you selling other people's brands? Why are you selling other people's brands? You're paying somebody to make them money. Maybe mm-hmm. you could just create your own brand. Wait, wait are, is, hold on. Are you telling me the emphasis of what would eventually become secret scientists started with your parents saying? Uh, no, because I was kind of dabbling with my own brand in college. I was like painting on things and stuff like that. Um, but honestly, old school stuff like the painting and stuff, yeah. that, that was just from seeing BJ, Bobby Giles, he, yeah. you know, popping in the city. He um, he was on a whole different side of town than me, mm-hmm. um, but he would paint on the vans and stuff like that. And so I saw it. I'm not I'm definitely not as artistic as he is because he's so talented. Mm-hmm. Um, but I saw it and was like, I should try that. So I actually started this brand in college. And it was just literally Tony backwards and other brands have already copied this before and done it before. And I'm sure I copied somebody and just called the brand. Why not? Because that's Tony backwards. Wow. Um, that's hard. <laughs> but it didn't but it didn't like pan out to be anything. But I had people on campus buying my stuff. Yeah. Um, I remember one night I like painted this shirt trying to get to the club. And my and I stupid put the shirt outside of the window thinking it would dry. Oh yeah. When I got to the <laughs> paint was, of- all, <laughs> was all over yeah. the shirt. Um, exactly what you talking about. But I mean, it's just been trial and error. But honestly, though, what really pushed me was at that time Mobile. Mobile was just that love hate city, and mm-hmm. so I had two people. I had two break ins in fly times. What? Um, somebody threw a brick through the window one time, and I know who it is to this day who did it. Um, it, it but for me, it's like well, I'm for me to go beat somebody up or shoot somebody or do something like I got I got more to lose than the average person. Yeah, I'm not going to jail for nobody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm just I'm big on like the energy and the atmosphere and karma and stuff like that you can't be a terrible person and if your your blessings are going to run out at some point mm-hmm. so it's not really my fight to get somebody back mm-hmm. so they took some clothes uh stayed open we broke in somebody broke in another time in fly times and where was fly times located government uh what can i remember the address 1300 1400 government something like that okay. um it was in bailey shopping center mm-hmm. uh, right there highway 90 government uh, and so the last time somebody broke in, so stupid, they thought they were taking the PlayStation and they took the Comcast box. <laughs> and so they took, so the PlayStation still sitting there. <coughs> Comcast box is gone because of course the alarm is going off. So they're yeah. panicking. We look in the register. They took like a five dollar bill. There was still cash in the register. And I was like, you know what? I don't even know if this is a thief. This is somebody that just doesn't really want me to be here. Yeah. And at that time, I was fresh out of college. I was probably three years in there, fly times, 25 years old. Yeah. I was like, I got time to do something else. I'm just not doing this right now. Yeah. Um, But luckily for me, I had started my brand within the second year of my store. Mm -hmm. And so... I kept going with Secret Scientist. Okay, but it so all originally started. it was called Secret Scientist when you started. The brand. The yeah. store was Fly Times, of yeah. course. Fly Times sold other other brands, but you got to think. We were like, so we were the second streetwear boutique in Alabama. The store in Huntsville um, opened up a store, a streetwear store, but we became the biggest store in Alabama streetwear-wise because mm-hmm. we had the Tendi, the Crooks, yeah. the Play Clothes, yeah. um, the Snapbacks, yeah. to the point where when I first opened up, they literally asked where you inside of the mall, and if you were located in the mall, you couldn't have the brand. That's how what? like streetwear used to be. Oh, okay, okay. Like you had because I do boutique. remember it, you had to have a niche boutique. <laughs> yeah, that was, you had your own storefront. If you're, but it's, I mean, they went to the money a year or two later. All those big brands and blew yeah. up and went to the malls. Yeah, which was fine. But yeah, when I first opened up. They had to know who you carried, mm-hmm. when you started, mm-hmm. um, and where you located inside of a mall. So, did you have Billionaire Boys Club? Yeah, I was the first person. Ice cream. In, first person in Alabama to carry Billionaire Boys Club. Man, do you? Me and my brother was looking for Billionaire Boys Club back then. First, first person in Alabama to carry Diamond Thanks. Supply. First person to carry Crooks and Castles. Actually, um, I had, I had a little cool. That was ice cream. No ice cream. This is before yeah. Rockaway bought BBC. The T-shirts were like 120, 140. They're fifty dollars now. Yeah, this right, is right. like post. This is real streetwear days yeah. when like 
Pharrell was with Nigo with Bay. Yeah, yeah, like that. exactly. You know, uh, people don't know who Nigo is. Not you know uh, that tells you my old old school streetwear. Yeah, um, and so I did it. You know, flat times it was good. Broke even probably for three, or I think I broke even. I'm sure my parents bailed me out a couple times, but <laughs> but I think when people call that spoon fed, mm-hmm. I just got put into a blessed situation. You know, I hope my son Max. I may not want to give him something sometimes, but if I gotta mail him, bail him out, yeah. I'm probably gonna bail him out. Yeah. I, I don't teach the tough love to Max and like move out at 18. And it may not work for everybody, but yeah. for me, I want Max to have a silver spoon, platinum spoon, gold spoon. I don't care what kind of spoon it is. I want to be able to yeah. give my wife and my son the world. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way, bro. I'm yeah, the same yeah, way. You know, just there's too many there's too many black people. That are like struggling because of like mental and verbal abuse because of what people did 50 years ago and 40 mm-hmm. years ago. When at some point we've just got to progress and do things a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Um, are your parents proud of you? Very much so. Uh, they go into the store more than I know. And the store tells me that they go and go into the store or I'll see my dad wearing I'm like, when did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I popped by the store. But I will tell you, at first they hated everything about Fly Times Boutique. Why? It's never been done in the city. So all my parents see is streetwear, rappers wearing it, people smoking weed. Yeah. What are you doing out of college? What are you yeah. you want to be this person? Probably. I'm just graduating college. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but no. So they hated every second of it. You don't know what you're doing. But yeah. crazy enough, I don't know if they prayed about it, but... They supported me when it happened, and yeah. they supported me then as much as they didn't like it. They never let me quit. Yeah. Um, but now they're like my biggest fans. They yeah. love going places, and my mm-hmm. mom does this thing where she sees somebody wearing Secret, and she's like, oh, you know about Secret? And they're like, yes, ma'am. And she's like, oh, me too. And they're like, you don't know nothing about Secret. She like sets them up for her joke. Oh, mm-hmm. that's my son that owns it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's cool. Corny cool. stuff that parents do, but yeah. no, nah, they... Um, they love secret scientists. Yeah. They really, really do. So I've heard you say, uh, bless, pray, uh, blessings. Um, you speak on the thought process of uh, reciprocation, basically planting seeds and reaping a harvest. So, But you used the word karma when you spoke mm-hmm. on it. However, it's the same exactly. concept. Yeah. Um, are you a spiritual person, religious person? Do you subscribe to? I mean, family? honestly, I'm, I'm praying every single day. Uh, brought up Christian, still Christian. Um, but also just believe in like positivity and happiness. Yes. And I'm not going to judge anybody because they believe something That's, different than me. I'm not that type of person. But where, that is true Christianity. Exactly. Not to judge, but to love. You know, so at the end of the day, I got to pray. I got a lot going on. Mm-hmm. I got literally just told my wife we just bought a new house and there's this church that I wanted to go to. And it just happens to be like literally right across the street. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to go to that church. Um, I just need I just need my peace and I think everybody can come across a different type of peace that they like mm-hmm. and when I feel church is a safe place to me yes it's supposed and to so be. I don't I don't think about anything I don't feel anything mm-hmm. all I feel is like a release of like okay I can breathe when I'm in here yeah um, and so I like it and I can't lie not to say that I go every Sunday and it's probably been a while COVID kind of threw everything off but mm-hmm. I was just making excuses but I did tell my wife though once we move and we are moving soon I gotta start going to church again because I need it and I enjoy it mm-hmm. I'm not and, I, and it's probably because my parents when I was in church typical black family is no choice you going to church yeah that's how they go <laughs> you know you going to church <laughs> but it's given me a really really good foundation to just just always stay positive and feel like I always have somebody looking out for me. Like I told you the other day, I have a really good relationship with God to the point where I know things are going to work out mm-hmm. because at this point, why would you bless me just to stop me at this point? Yeah. You've given me this dream and you've given me this goal and like you, and with reciprocation, just like anything, I'm doing the things that I should do as a human being and as a good Christian. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says I'm going to get blessed. Yeah. And blessed doesn't necessarily mean monetary value with money. I'm cool with peace. I love my peace of mind. But that is a blessing. You know, yeah. And that's a blessing for me. You know, a lot of people like I need this, this, this much money, this much money. The money's cool. Mm -hmm. But peace is a lot cooler. 
I agree. You know, I, li- I like having my peace. And so the things that I want, I come up with crazy ideas, but it's worked out. So I just keep pushing, <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, and there's also just been situations that I know I shouldn't got. I know I shouldn't have got out of. Mm-hmm. And I prayed and I probably shouldn't have got out of it. But some kind of way God got me out of it. Yeah. And so I use that when I'm dealing with something else like, nah, that situation you made it through years ago was mm-hmm. a lot tougher than it is now. If God got you through that, he'll get you through this. Um, and I'm, I'm just not one of those people who's like, I got to pray in mama and a pray in great mom, grandma. No, I need, to, I need to pray for myself. Listen. I also need to care about myself. You yeah. Know, I can't. I'm an adult. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to die with them. We're not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we're, I'm a, my own separate person. So I am religious. I'm throughout the day. I'm probably just praying and not yeah. like sitting down on my knees saying, dear God. But it's like, thank you, God. You know, yeah. things like that. But just see, like, that's the reason why, right? That's mm-hmm. the reason why you're allowed to elevate to this stature, because God doesn't do anything for anybody but for praise. Mm-hmm. That's it. He wants you to rep him when it's time. You speak your peace on him when it's time, and you always tell him thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm learning this new thing. I've been studying Myron Go- Golden, and you know he makes his money off making everybody else richer. Mm-hmm. You know, and one of his principles is, uh, I'm not proud of anything that I do mm-hmm. because pride coming before destruction. I am thankful for everything that mm-hmm. I do. So he say rather than saying I'm proud, he says I'm thankful, mm-hmm. and. I had to look at that because I was trying to figure out how to describe that feeling, right? It's a feeling of accomplishment, Mm -hmm. you know? So you want to say I've accomplished something, but the correct term is to say, no, God, you accomplished something Mm -hmm. and you used me as the vessel to do it because people are watching you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And that was the point, right? The word said be a light and that's what you're doing. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And I think with me, I'm so different than the average brand owner in Mobile Mm -hmm. where I think people are kind of drawn to me and they're intrigued by me because I'm never like oh I'm better than you or I'm this and that just happen to find what I love and I really love clothes and I've worked really hard Mm -hmm. and it worked out Mm -hmm. and I deserve everything that I have yeah nothing was given to me there's been times where I was on my last dollar yeah and I stayed stay true to the brand and didn't make certain things that other people were making and things like that. And so I think that's the intrigue with our brand is because mm-hmm. we are kind of like a secret for lack of words. Yeah. Nobody knows too much about like my thought process and what goes into my daily routine because I like to keep my circle tight. Yeah. You know, um, and so like people like y'all will come in here and, and interview me and things like that. But on the average day is four or five people in here. And that's how I like it. Yeah. Um, and I just stay out of the way. You know, I don't, I don't, not to man, I just don't want to do certain things anymore. And it's mm-hmm. not to knock what anybody else does. Everybody can make a decision on their life based on them. Mm-hmm. But for me, people don't really understand like, well, how is Tony doing this when Tony's not really ever around anybody? Mobile always makes you say, oh, only the popular people are successful. I don't really, I'm not popular because of me. I'm only popular now because of my brand. I was just, I'd just be kicking it. I would have been good at whatever. I could have, I could have been corporate Zoomies right now, making two hundred thousand dollars a year. But I was just good at my job, and I want to be good at my job. Yeah. So no matter what. Yeah. I would have still been successful. It didn't matter what I was going to do because I just have that internal drive where I'm gonna make it happen. So that that comes from a sense of knowing who you are. Yeah, of course. And that is from your parents, mm-hmm. right? They they always instilled in you to be. And I'm pretty sure when they talked to you, they didn't talk to you like you was just a boy in America. Yeah. They talked to you like you was a little black boy in America. Exactly. And what that meant. Of course. You know, so of course, you don't walk around with it on your shoulders, but you consider it in your moves, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how does this reflect me, my folks, uh, my beliefs, Mm -hmm. and my community? Like, how am I adding to the positivity and the peace Mm -hmm. and not the negativity? You know, because currently they've been trying to associate you with being in competition with people. And you've made it very clear to me. We don't do competition because everybody can get some money. Mm-hmm. Everybody can be great. You know what I'm saying? Money ain't and, never going to run out in America. We're exactly. in the United States of America. Exactly. I don't care what they say. The money always getting printed. And you ain't going <laughs> to. It don't make sense to step on nobody. No, nah, they, 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 nah. the money never going to run out. And not to mention everybody out here. You know them in some shape, form, or fashion. Well, also, too, we've, we've 
already created a brand image of who we are. Yeah. So I'm not about to change my brand image to to make sure that we are trying to do other things or do things that we shouldn't be doing um, that don't don't flow with our brand. Yeah. You know, and so right now I'm at peace with where the brand is and Mm -hmm. I don't really look at anything else. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm in Mobile. I see my brand everywhere. Yeah. So why would I even think about that type of stuff? It yeah. don't, people don't even know me. I see people. I was Where was I the other day? Uh, oh, I was in Publix. Mm-hmm. And this guy had on a hat. And I was like, thank you so much for wearing my brand. He might have known me, didn't yeah. know me. But anytime I see somebody wearing my stuff, I say thank you. Like, without the customers, I wouldn't be able to be doing what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So if you trust me and respect my brand and have a certain feeling about it, mm-hmm. Thank you. Wow. You know, because it just why would I why would I feel like I'm better than anybody when I need everybody else to survive? Clothing is not based on me. Clothing is based on customers. I agree. So without the customers, I don't have a brand. I think people are forgetting that. I think <clears throat> customer service has gone out the window. Don't get it twisted now. The customer is not always right. Oh, that's true too. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? We definitely don't have that customer is always right motto in the store. You know, we have people come in the store with attitude and my staff will tell them, look, whatever you had going on before this and mm-hmm. you mad at, you ain't mad at us. Mm-hmm. So y'all, you can be mad when you leave out of here, but while we're in here, we're going to have respect for each other. Yeah. Um, and so I, we're really big on customer service. Yeah. I said all the time, I need to be the Chick-fil-A of streetwear. Mm-hmm. I need somebody to come in and say, hey... I got the wrong size shirt and I need somebody to say, no, you didn't. Yeah. That's the shirt you paid for, but mm-hmm. you can go back and they can fix it. Yeah. Because if I go to Chick-fil-A and go through the drive through and they forget my fries and I post they forgot my fries, the first thing that people are going to say is check your receipt. Are you sure they rang you up for them? <laughs> so we need, we want to be that. We want to be the, the customer, the Chick-fil-A of streetwear. Yeah. Where we have such good service where nobody believes that we did you wrong. Yeah. Well, as far as I done heard, that's how you... That's how you move. And you, you deal with your little bumps in the road of certain people, you know, saying things <clears throat> online and stuff like that. But it's like, this is just life. People just talk. Yeah. And regardless, it's not stopping our progression. So, But I mean, that's something you've noticed. I, I It hadn't made it to me. It's not discussed. Well, it's going to always make it to me because you're in charge. Yeah, I'm in charge. Yeah, <laughs> of course. You know, but I would never address anybody's situation online with anybody because at the end of the day, that person's not mad at me. Yeah. That person is upset with their current life situation that's exactly then, then nothing about secret scientists should be making you mad it's close and <laughs> and what i must say to you is if you bought that shirt you couldn't afford that shirt when you bought that shirt don't be mad at the shirt because you bought it you should well, well people are like what's your what's your why is your return policy only three days well i release every single friday if i didn't have a three-day return policy you would have bought something two weeks ago when the new outfit comes out in two weeks you want to come and exchange it yeah i've created the blueprint of every friday so i have to have a return policy because it would just be unfair to other people that maybe have wanted that outfit you mm-hmm. went and bought it you sat on it for two weeks and then brought it back yeah i can't do it now yeah the, the buzz for my brand is what we drop every single week yeah so we, we and have, how long you been dropping every single week now? Uh, we're almost at a hundred straight weeks. I think two weeks from now, three weeks from now, we'll be at a hundred straight weeks. So almost two full years. That's every crazy. single Friday. Crazy. So not just one piece either, like six to eight pieces a week. That's wild. Yeah. So. How do you keep up with that? So before the summer started, we planned the whole twenty-seven weeks. We split mm-hmm. off. We split the year into two, not four, because mm-hmm. Mobile doesn't have four seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and so most of our subs in the south. So we're going to do 27 weeks of the summer and then whatever's left is going to be counted as a winter. Maybe like a couple, four weeks overlap. Mm-hmm. Um, probably September-ish will be like kind of fall and summer. Yeah. And then March is like fall, spring and winter type, you know, feel. But nah, we plan everything. If we, that room behind us, all 27 weeks are on the board. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm putting out. My manufacturer knows my quantities. My manufacturer knows what designs I'm putting out. Mm-hmm. We've already have, we already have our winter designs. Yeah. Um, so you just got to be ahead. Do you have a whole team of designers or are you still nah, the only person? Uh, I don't even do any designing. Um, one person, a guy that I have, I, I took from Zoomies, didn't take from Zoomies, but yeah. he used to work for Zoomies. And then Kel, uh, who helps run our stores, Kel is also starting to design a little bit. But okay. I can't really design as much as I used to anymore because I'm just not with the trend. Yeah. I'm getting older and there's certain things that people wear nowadays. I'm just like, y'all look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know what I'm saying? So for me, so for me, it's like I would never make that, but yeah. I'm also not going to stop myself from making any money because as a brand, you kind of have to change with the times. Okay. I mean, there's timeless pieces like Polo is going to always have that Polo horse that's timeless. Yes. 
but they're going to try some, you know, every now and then they're going to try some stuff out. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I just can't design like I used to because mm-hmm. I don't really care about the trends and I wear a lot of basics. Yeah. Um, and so that's just kind of what I'm about. If I could just drop basics, solid colors, secret, I would just do that for the end of time. Well, now you can. I mean, yeah. You gotta, so you we're getting it. there. But I mean, it's just we're, we're we're getting there. I tell people it's not about people overthink the name. It's not about the name. It's about how people feel when they put on your clothes. Exactly. You know, people might say, "Oh, I can't believe you got those thousand dollar pair of Gucci sneakers on." But that person wearing those sneakers when they walk in the club, mm-hmm. they feel like the man. Yeah. And your energy is everything. Energy is everything. So, and that's why I'm really, really big on like my staff. Like y'all have to look good at work. Nobody wants to come into a clothing store and you look terrible at work. Mm-hmm. I got to look good. Yeah. You know, and when people put on Secret Scientist, I want to feel like, man, I feel amazing in this. I got on Secret Scientist. Yeah. You know, people always like Nike. Nike's got a check. A check. They didn't create a net. They didn't create the check. They didn't design the check. Very true. They just they just got a check. It's not about. Matter of fact, I believe they paid two hundred dollars for it. It's it's not about the design. It's about how you feel when you put on a pair of Nikes. Mm-hmm. You know, there's always that debate between LeBron and Jordan. I get it. I love LeBron. He's great. Mm-hmm. But Jordan's still selling out shoes to generations of kids that never saw him play. That's true. That's true. He's, I don't care about the rings. I don't care about the wins. My man is selling shoes to kids that never saw him play. He's the greatest of all time. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, it does, I don't care about the accolades on the court. He's off the court. And he's still the biggest brand in Nike. Yeah. So why, why would I not call? He had the greatest impact in the history of sports. Matter of fact, the reason they say it took him so long to get his first billion was because of the original deal cut. But see, now it's a different deal. Yeah. Which is why you never really saw Jordan stores mm-hmm. prior because Nike wouldn't allow them to be built. But now they don't have a choice in that. I mean, yeah, if I say at this point, they, they can't really make any decisions yeah. because they're going to win regardless. It's how much money you want to give up. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like my dad always says, some money better than no money. You're right about that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'd rather have some uh, some some money coming in the store than zero dollars. Yeah, a hundred dollar day is better than a zero dollar day all day long. You know, so that's dope, man. So, all right, we're gonna slide into a ten things game. Okay? okay, so name ten things about your brand that attracts customers. Ten. Ten. Um, me. <laughs> I'm one. I'm one. Okay. I'm on social media all day long, you know, pushing the brand and things like that. Okay. Um, So personal touch. Yeah. Personal touch for sure. Um, Our designs probably. We have really good designs this summer. Um, I think people love our story. Okay. Um, Our quality is fantastic. We've got our sizing right. A lot of brands just can't get their sizing right and things like that. Okay. Um, We had six. We... um, under promise and over deliver for sure. Okay. Um, so we're going to always give you a little bit more than what you think you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't lie. Everything we say we're going to put out, we put out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of times a lot of new brands get ahead of themselves and say, coming soon, coming soon. You don't know what's coming soon because you haven't sold out what you got right now. Oh. So I think a lot of times people get ahead of themselves, but mm-hmm. we've created the position where... I know it's coming soon. I got 27 weeks. Yeah. Um, but so, so I feel like you done hit all 10. You got some more? We'll take some more game. I mean, I'm just kind of freestyling right yeah. now. Because, um, I mean, in all honesty, right, what's happening right now, the viewers and listeners have moved from, because they know when we play the 10 things game, we're going into entrepreneur mode. Uh-huh. You know, so they've moved from being fans of the brand to now they have their pad and their pencil and they're actually paying attention to what you just yeah. said. So basically what you said is the only reason why it's not making sense to say coming soon is because you haven't built the model to get rid of your current. Correct. So you should really focus on how to get rid of what you got. Well, I think a lot of people mimic other brands, which they should, because there's definitely a blueprint for everything. Mm -hmm. But I tell you a lot of time there's levels. As crazy that Meek Mill song is, there's Mm -hmm. levels. There's levels. Yeah. To everything. Yeah. Um, 
you can get into certain rooms that somebody else may not get into. Like I told you, I don't I don't understand like people get offended. Oh, I want to be by a secret scientist and such and such. Oh, I don't want to be by them. I don't need to get offended if I go into the room with Ralph Lauren. He's bigger than me. Yeah. It doesn't knock my brand because Ralph Lauren is bigger than me. Yes. <laughs> because in real life, he has He's a bigger, bigger brand than me. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like um, people just get offended by certain things. And so I don't. Yeah. You know, I don't. Uh, I'm in I'm Mobile. I'm the big fish. Mm-hmm. You know, like I don't I'm not the little fish here. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm the big fish. And so I don't really need to worry about certain things. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, for my brand, I guess number 10, maybe we match the shoes that come out, maybe. Yeah. But you I mean, know, everybody's shoes never. You know, at the end of the day, we just get lucky because I don't know what's coming out week to week. I just have, again, we're so organized. I got enough stock in my stores where they'll tell me what shoes coming out. Oh, we good. Okay. But it's not like planned out. Oh, okay. Well, I don't, I don't really wear Jordans and stuff like I used to anymore. Mm-hmm. So... I don't really know what's coming out. So what's your favorite shoe right now? Uh, I got a lot of Gucci shoes right now. I can't lie. What? Yeah. I wear a lot of designer shoes. Mm. A lot. A lot, lot. A lot, lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, can't nobody be mad at you. You've earned that success to be able to purchase those things. Well, I, I know my vice, and my vice are shoes. Yeah. Uh, I lo- Again, I love... I can, I can wear a Secret Scientist shirt... And I get, wear Secret Scientist jeans, and I just got on some designer shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna always get probably some Jordan ones. Yeah. Um, but I like Dunks. I love Dunks, but I'm like from Dunks where I used to get it from the Nike outlet for like thirty four ninety nine. Yeah. Type dunk type. Yeah. Too. And I just like Dunks because they got a good toe box, and my my right pinky toe doesn't hurt when I wear them. Yeah. And so a lot of shoes, your right pinky toe yeah. hurts in shoes. Um. But to be honest, right now, probably, well, if, if it wasn't designer, it'd probably be New Balance 550s. Okay. You know, I, I do like a good New Balance 550 because they're comfortable. Um, but that's, but honestly, if I'm going to dinner and something, there's going to be some designer shoes. <laughs> so, <clears throat> is Secret Science going to stay in the lane of skater vibes or are they going to go into professional clothes? Uh, um... We have such a, a diverse demographic mm-hmm. where I'm going to always probably have to do a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not ever going to be able to get rid of those skater type vibes because Zoomies did teach me so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and, when, and When you was in charge of Zoomies, how much money did you bring them? Zoomies went from $600,000 a year to a million dollars a year. That one in the mall? Yes. Because of you? Yeah. And that makes sense for why you're making all this money. Yeah, we, went, we were at six hundred. When I left, Zoomies in Mobile was the number one Ethica distributor in the co- in the company. Zoomies in Mobile was doing a hundred thousand dollars just in underwear. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. So Ethica, we got every single pair of Ethicas that ever touched the company because we had branded it enough to like mm-hmm. want it, want it, want it, want it, want it. So it's your fault all these people walking around colorful drawers on. Yes. Okay. One hundred percent. I was trying to figure Women, out. Women's like, Ethica was like the highest. St- tried to get stolen more than anything. Women's ethical. What? Yeah. So, but Zoomies taught me a lot. I can't lie. Zoomies, uh, like I tell them all the time, Zoomies kind of set me up for success in Mobile. Mm-hmm. I had got this job wearing a suit every day in Von Mar, uh, like a department mm-hmm. store. Promoted me to Alpharetta to be a floor manager, managing like 80 people. Um, and so I was going to buy this Burberry watch and I didn't buy it and I left it on my counter. And I went on like this manager crazy training trip for like three days. Mm-hmm. And I came back and they fired me the day I got back from the manager's trip. What? Because I violated the hold policy. <laughs> Didn't steal it. Still in my office. <laughs> oh, that sounds like somebody you like. <laughs> That's crazy. So I was right below the store manager. The store manager definitely didn't like me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in real life, I guess I did violate the policy. But man, come on. But I didn't steal it, and I didn't get, like, get checked. I didn't have to clock in. If I wanted to steal that watch, I could have walked out with it numerous yeah. times and marked it off as a loss, and they would have never known. Um, but it was the biggest blessing in disguise. Yeah. At that point, I was kind of making decisions. Did I want to do this life, or did I want to have my brand? Mm-hmm. And then once they fired me, I didn't have nothing, no choice. So I went to... I ended up applying for a bunch of jobs, Mm -hmm. didn't even remember applying for Zoomies, and they just called me out of the blue 
came back to Mobile. Um, for lack of words, started trapping Zoomies out of the store before okay. they carried the brand. Yeah. But at the end of the day, my store was number one in the district. So why would you bother me? They may have known or not known. Or I feel like my district manager was starting to catch on to me. But what is she going to say? I mean, if somebody's bringing in you money yeah. and not hurting any customers and so, not doing anything, ooh. like why would, why, would you, why would you mess that up? So check this out. God just unlocked something in my brain, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So you're faithful. You pray. You talk to him. You love him properly. You love his people properly. He puts you in a position to experience success. But in order for you not to fail on where he's built, helping you build your foundation, he intentionally makes that the number one store. Yeah. To allow for you to build your own. Look, we were crazy. Like I had secret scientist bags inside of Zoomies and people when they bought my stuff, they had a secret bag and not a Zoomies bag. And so people were walking around, look, people were walking around the mall like, where's the secret store? Where's the secret store? And it was like, oh, you got to have the mm -hmm. private knock. <laughs> the private knock the yeah. What you talking about? <laughs> Do you work for Zoomies? Oh, no, I'm trying to get some clothes. Oh, we got it in the back. What you need? And when I tell you to see it, to yeah, see like, it, right? I stood there with this man for two hours one day just asking him regular questions. You know, he was answering small questions like what colors to start with, how many pieces to ask for. When you order that many pieces, you can split it into multiple colors. You could tell them about fabrics. You could change what a zipper is. Yeah. You could do all of that. When you he's just giving me all this game. The whole time he's giving me game, he's selling Zoomy stuff and secret stuff at the same time. Well, you, I just had to make sure, you know, and I, I took care of my people and they all could have got fired for being, I wouldn't even have to be there and they were selling my stuff. We would literally keep boxes in the, uh, in the like emergency exit. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one time my district manager, I think she, I'm telling you she was on to me. She popped up on me and I didn't remember, or I didn't even know she was going to be there. So I like mm -hmm. ran to the back, had to move boxes all over the place. And I came back out and she was like, what were you doing back there? And I was like, just using the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't know anything about the exit door. It was to the point where the exit door, we had turned off the alarm. Mm -hmm. She didn't even know that. But she thought if she opened up the door, mm -hmm. the alarm would go off. <laughs> oh, so that's why <laughs> so she, she was didn't avoiding even, She didn't it. even go through the back door. Yeah. But at the end of the day, um, it worked. She messed, She mistakenly one time gave me her location, and I never. And she never turned it off and didn't realize it. I, tra <laughs> I literally I tracked my, and I don't even care anymore if she hears this. Yeah, I tracked her location every day for a full year. Wow. So like eleven, I would track her. I knew she lived in New Orleans, so yeah. she had a two hour drive. Yeah. Twelve thirty, I would track her. Two thirty, I would track her. So I knew if she wasn't on the road by like four, she wasn't coming for the day. Yeah. But if I saw her moving, I'd text my staff. She's on the move. <laughs> <laughs> move the boxes to the back. Wow. But at the end of the day, my staff always knew we needed to make sure Zoomy's got to be number one still. Mm -hmm. This is my livelihood. Mm -hmm. So I still train them properly. Um, we still became the number one store in the district. But also, too, my brand brought people into the store. They would buy T-shirts from us and buy our jeans and buy the Ethica and things like that. Mm -hmm. So even though Zoomy's indirectly wasn't making any money, we were bringing the sales and for there because of the brand and also too if you went if i went from if i had a store manager that brought one of my stores from six hundred thousand to a million and somebody told me they was trapping their stuff out i'd be like they need to bring some more stuff in there yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what I'm saying? clearly it's drawing in the crowd but also too it, it all worked out i mean we just got this new deal with zoomies where we're about to be in 50 zoomies locations without mm -hmm. me getting fired on some humbug foolishness and coming to work for zoomies i would have never met the buyers i would have never built a relationship with all the manager events I use that for long-term success. I knew I didn't want to be with Zoomies forever, mm -hmm. but I always made sure all the big people in charge knew who I was. Mm -hmm. So we went to manager meetings. I didn't care about partying with the manager. You can't do nothing for me. Mm -hmm. I need to meet the owner. I know the owner of Zoomies. His name is Tom. Old white man wears glasses. A billion dollar <laughs> store, 750 locations, literally an old white man, and just kicks it, pulls up in a Volvo. Yeah. But I can email him right now, and he'll respond to me. You know, I've got the, the district managers, the regional managers, all these people still respond to me mm -hmm. because I did a good job mm -hmm. and they could count on me. And, and I was a dependable person and I went above and beyond for my job, but it paid off because we went from seven zoomies to 20 zoomies to July. We're going to be at 50 zoomies. So I'm hoping by holiday we're in 100 zoomies. Mm -hmm. So, 
Zoomies, like I never talk bad about Zoomies. I know some things that I did mm -hmm. definitely weren't within the rules and the guidelines, mm -hmm. but I still did my job and I never I never talked bad about this brand to make my brand sell. Yeah. I was never like, don't come here, don't do this, don't do this. Mm -hmm. No, come to Zoomies, buy mm -hmm. this, but just make sure you get that secret scientist T2. Yeah. Separate transaction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big bags. So what does what does a Zoomies deal look like for somebody? Like, let's say I was able you you know what I'm saying, I go to a party and I meet somebody who could facilitate that and it, it gets me set up for success. Like, how do you how do you not without if you don't want to disclose your real figures, how do you know what to negotiate for? Well, for me, it's like we're already... The brand is good. So anything extra is just more money in the bank, more exposure for the brand. So, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So for Zoomies, you really need to be in a certain amount of stores to actually see like a real profit. Mm -hmm. um, and so... For me, 50 stores is fine, but before we did this current deal, I asked them how many stores was I gonna be in? Mm -hmm. Because if it wasn't the number that I wanted, I wasn't gonna do it. Okay. Because I didn't need to make time and money to do all this if it wasn't gonna put any real money in my pocket. Mm -hmm. So I think it just depends on the person mm -hmm. and how much money they've seen or how much they're making or how much they want. Mm -hmm. so for somebody else, 10 stores might be cool. Mm -hmm. I'm not wasting my time on 10 stores. Yeah. I don't need to. I have 10 of my own stores. Yeah. I can just buy that product and put it in my store and not pay nobody nothing and not wait on no money. Yeah. Um, so do they do they pay you for the product up front? Is it consignment? Well, it's just or? it's really weird. So a lot of the big companies, they do things like net 30, net 60, net 90, mm -hmm. kind of up for you to negotiate and things like that. Some people get all up front. Mm -hmm. It really just depends on you and how much value you have to the company. Mm -hmm. Somebody in seven stores doesn't have as much value as somebody with 150 stores. Yeah, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just depends on where you are. They, I think they start off a lot of people at net 60. So you've got to actually have the money and that's mm -hmm. what I tell people like I tell people all the time y'all want to have a certain brand and I want to be in big big stores but what if Zoomies tells you okay cool I want you to be in 100 stores but they're paying you net 30 mm -hmm. you ain't got the money because you can't fulfill you can't, you can't even you don't have the money to order it yeah so I think a lot of times people get ahead of themselves. So until you get to the point where you're getting these people to at least do net 30 or paying you up front, mm -hmm. you kind of got to be patient because then that means they're not going. So net 60 means I'm not paying you for 60 days. Yeah. So for two months, you've put $20,000 into an order. You're not getting it back mm -hmm. for, for two months. So that's almost got to be treated like a separate entity or a separate account mm -hmm. because this is nothing to do with anything mm -hmm. because it don't count for the money that's coming in every single day. So it just kind of depends. I mean, I mean, Route 21 was talking to us. They wanted net 90. And it was just like three months. Wow. So, and I've never even told anybody that Route 21 was going to yeah. carry the brand. But, but that's dope. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope, man. I mean, the fact that you're drawing the interest of a lot of people, we know these names. Endgame is Target. I want to be in every single Target location. Okay. So have you met the people? No, not yet. In game is Target. Yeah. People buy clothes in Target, buy groceries in Target. Yeah. People like Target. Yeah. Target. Yes. People think it's high end shopping. That's exactly what it is. And you can you can still get away with a twenty five dollar T shirt in Target. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I want to be in Target. It doesn't matter who goes in there. They got every every demographic in there. I agree. Yeah. I can see you surviving in Target. Yeah, I just want to be. Yeah. In, I just that that's like end goal retire. Yeah. But they'd have to be like, hey, we're gonna do something crazy, like five hundred stores or something like that. You know, which is cool. I want to yeah. do it. But so if Walmart positions you, yeah, they can have it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the end of the game, that's what I, I. So we interviewed somebody this morning, and we were like, so it's not gonna be a one manager setting. It's gonna be a co manager setting. I said, but if you tell me how much money you want to make, and I say okay. Who cares about the title? Mm -hmm. You you just got what you asked for. Yeah. So who cares? Some people like control too much. And it, it doesn't make any sense because the end game is money. Only thing that's keep here is some money anyway. Big facts. So, yeah, man. If Walmart came to me right now, they can have it. <laughs> it's Wal still Walmart, funny, please man. reach out to me. Walmart, if you're listening, please reach out. <laughs> Trust me. I'm gonna be somebody. <laughs> I'm gonna have Walmart on this podcast. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell them, hey, I know somebody who want to get in this store. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love what I do. <laughs> Honestly, in, in two, two, three years, we're thinking about doing franchising because a lot of people reach out to us about franchising. Mm -hmm. I just don't know about know too much about franchise law yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to like learn that before I do it because I'm mm -hmm. not gonna jump out and do something 
that I don't know how to do, especially yeah. when I don't know anybody that can help me. Mm-hmm. Um, so probably two, three years, we might decide to start franchising where it becomes not my responsibility to actually sell the clothes. Yeah. They're just buying the clothes from me and they've got to push the brain and do the work. So we'll see what happens. Hey, that's going to be dope, man. All right. So we got somebody. It's their first day. They just like, I got this dream. I want to make some clothes, man. Man, I got it in my head, man. This is how they talk to me, too, so I ain't lying. Oh, trust me, I, I get crazy questions. I just got it in my head, man. I got this thing. It's a robot attached to a dinosaur with a bear on it. And I'm just like, huh? And they like, don't worry about it. I already drew it out on the computer. Okay. How do I turn this into a shirt? It's just simple as that. How do I take something I either drew by hand or I figured out how to use Photoshop? Mm-hmm. Enough to put this on a shirt. What would you tell them? Have you have you budgeted anything? Have you reached out to any manufacturer and got pricing? I don't know how to do that part. How do I do that? Google.com. Mm. All you can li- you can literally type in how to print a t shirt, and you can find a printer. You can find your local screen printer. You can even find your whole, your wholesale website. Alibaba is going to pop up every single day of the week. Yes. All right. So look. Since he's talking about those <laughs> and he's making it this plain and simple, right? I'm going to give you a key with this one, too. All you got to do is, in your local city, type in Vinyl Shop. Mm-hmm. If you type in Vinyl Shop, it'll show you the people who make vinyl, who sell the vinyl. All right. Nine out of ten, they also sell wholesale items, okay, for as cheap as possible. And you will meet other people there who do exactly what you want to do. And those people who sell the vinyl and the blank gear also provide printing services for cheap. It just depends on how they want to do it. And it just like so I'm gonna, I would ask them, so how do you want it to be branded? Are you selling $100 T-shirts? Are you selling $25 T-shirts? Are you selling $300? Have you come up with a marketing plan for how you're going to brand it? Mm-hmm. You can't sell me a $100 T-shirt and it looks like you did the photo shoot in your garage. Gucci doesn't look like a photo shoot in a garage. Ciroc is disgusting, but every Diddy commercial made you feel like you was in, in the party having a good time. It definitely It looked did. like money. Everything is just about branding. And so I'd probably, I'm probably not the person for people to ask the first steps anymore mm-hmm. because the first steps are hard for me to remember now. Mm. And so, and it's not to knock anybody else, but mm-hmm. to come to me and ask for questions, you need to be a little bit more established mm-hmm. because I'm not thinking about the foundation anymore. My foundation has been set. Yeah, My mind thinks about six months from now, what am I putting out and things like that. And Alibaba.com is free. Anybody that needs a brand, go to Alibaba.com. Alibaba is where you can, find You the can vendors. type in anything. You don't need to ask anybody for a vendor. They got it from Alibaba.com. So how did you avoid getting got? That's a good question. You can't avoid it. It depends on who you're dealing with. If you're dealing with somewhere like Pakistan, yeah. there's no PayPal. There's no, you have to risk it all. Yeah. The biggest thing is to try to find somebody that takes PayPal where you're protected. Yeah. Um, I was paying through MoneyGram. MoneyGram is not protected. And now Western they got, Union's uh, not protected. Payoneer. Yeah. You know, they've got Payoneer. They have uh, this thing called Zoom that's mm-hmm. through PayPal. Um, but I definitely got got before. Mm-hmm. When I first, first started, got got. How much did they get? It's like three or four grand. Oh, my God. Um, <clears throat> but it just comes with the territory. I mean, but you never know. You you come across somebody that you didn't get got, and they put out a bad product. I had one manufacturer that I dealt with. I can't even lie to you. They made these sweatsuits for me, mm-hmm. and I paid them forty thousand dollars. And they sent the first half of the sweatsuits. They were terrible. I blocked them and took a twenty thousand dollar loss because I knew I couldn't sell the product. That's crazy. But I didn't want it. Yeah. I was gonna lose more than twenty thousand dollars putting this terrible product out. Y'all can have it. Sell it to somebody else. I don't care. Yeah. Um, Man, I just had somebody uh, It was the last thing I was going to do Before I automated the business mm-hmm. It's like, uh, I was talking to my brother And I was like, hey man, this is going to be our last drop We had these t-shirts We found a design Do you know, not only did these people Make the t-shirts the way they wanted to make them Argued with me mm-hmm. About the design to the point I said, forget it Sent them the other half of the money, just send me my shirts Because I can get rid of them either yeah. way But it was just a point, I wanted it up Certain kind of way. Mm-hmm. So, um, do you know they sent it to me cash on delivery, and they overnighted it. They won twice. You know what I told them? <laughs> I said, "Oh no, y'all take that back." Yeah, I don't have them shirts. I have not sold them shirts. And then, yeah, now I just spend like 
I don't know. It just, it's just different now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Alibaba.com. But if somebody, I mean, honestly, I'm all for it. And my thing, I guess I always try to ask too, like, what is your inspiration? What is your motivation? What are you trying to make the brand look like? I don't care what anybody says. Nobody's creating anything new anymore. Fashion just rolls back around. Mm -hmm. All those stack pants and stuff, that's just bell bottoms mm -hmm. that came back around. You know, and in two years, you're not going to be wearing these stack pants. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's just like, where, where do you want your brand to be? Um, but what, well, how much can you lose? That's what I would ask somebody. What, you're going to lose more than you win at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So what's your number? What's your quitting number? Are you going to just go all in, all in? You can be crazy like me and go all in until you don't have no money and then see what happens. <laughs> but everybody's not like that. Yeah. Because I also kept the job during my clothing while I was beginning. I always knew I had a check coming in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, like, new brand owners. New brand owners got a lot to compete with more than I did, say, 15, 10 years ago, where the quality didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. When I was opened up fly times, there was brands that were still using the Gildan tags. You can't. You shouldn't do that anymore. You know, there's there's somebody locally that'll rip out the tag and at least print the stamp in there. Yep. You know, even if it's just the size. Yep. But you can't just. It's just different. Social media changed everything. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to look cool and everybody wants to look like money. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, how much you got or the design you got, if somebody doesn't feel a certain way again about your product, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how I feel. I love Secret Scientist. Everybody mm -hmm. knows I love Secret Scientist. It's mine. Yeah. Now I need to figure out how other people feel when they put on Secret Scientist. Yeah. Um, but that, that'd that be my first thing. Have you checked out Alibaba.com? Mm -hmm. you, you don't need my manufacturers because my minimums are higher than yours. I'm buying for nine stores. You can't use my manufacturers because they have thousands of pieces minimum. Mm -hmm. So I don't know any 50-piece manufacturers anymore. Wow. Because the minimums get higher when you start doing more and more, you know, more yeah, items. Deal, you're dealing yeah. with people, you know. Certain places like China... China's gonna want more than Pakistan. Pakistan, man, it's crazy over there. They full of hustlers, boy. Pakistan, mm -hmm. boy, they will send you a hundred DMs. This mm -hmm. manufacturer, they, they de Matt, my love, my wife created a page for Max. He's sixteen months. The manufacturers DM his page, like he can read and write and, and write them back. <laughs> yeah, so like Pakistan just want the money, but like places like China where they're known for making things, yeah, it's just not as not as easy as you know everybody else. Yeah. So um, we're about to wrap up soon with this part of it. Okay. Um, and when I say wrap up, I'm telling you, you should be liking, subscribing, and sharing whatever platform you're watching this on. And to my Patreon people, come on. You know I got you. You ain't got to worry about nothing. We got those extra coming through just for you. So, the last question for the freebies. Okay. Um, what they want to know is, how did these famous people find you? Uh, to be real, man, when we first started off, especially when we opened up the store, man, I would I would shoot a hundred blue checks a message a night. Same exact, hey, can we see some clothes? Shoot me your size and address. It'll be on the way tomorrow. I it, it didn't matter to me. You don't make any shots. You don't shoot. Yeah. So even if I went over a hundred, I was still in the same place as I was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, before I asked a question, mm -hmm. and then. Some might respond, some might not respond. But as your brand grows, you just kind of start getting in different rooms with different people and you see certain people. Um, and then the blue check people ain't no different than nobody else. Once they see yeah. their person wearing it and they tag you, yeah. you're going to get a DM from another blue check person and say, hey, I want to wear your clothes. Mm -hmm. And you just got to decipher. My whole, my whole message on Instagram is all blue checks of people that want to wear our stuff. And we just kind of pick and choose who we want to send it to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm, I'm just straight up with the people like, okay, cool. I'm sending you free stuff. Who else can you get my product to? Mm. You know, now they're like, let me buy it. Let me buy it, which is fine. Yeah. But at the beginning, sometimes you really do just have to do product placement. Brands do product placements every single day. Yeah. Um, so do you require them to take a picture? If they don't tag me in the first time they wear it, they know they'll never get a piece again. <sighs> I don't care who you are. <laughs> I don't yeah, care. but that's how you protect yourself, right? No, I tell them straight up. If you, I could read you a DM. If you don't tag me in this picture that you post, you will never get another piece of clothing. Mm -hmm. So, so who were all the famous people? In case we missed the something? biggest right now that's ever worn it, probably Uzi. But Uzi got it through Casino from Freebank. Yeah. So Casino used to wear SS like every day. I don't Casino. If you hear this, please call me. Who knows? I don't even know where you are right now. <laughs> um, so Casino Ward every day, and of course Uzi had the project with Future he was working yeah. on, and he had something SS 
Pluto or something he was doing, and he yeah. saw the hat. So he asked Casino to get me get him some clothes, okay. and he actually wore it in in one of the videos. Okay. Um, but we go from like Uzi Casino all the way to Boys to Men. So like Boys to Men wears our stuff regular. We can oh I can go to any Boys to Men show for free backstage. Stop everything. playing. Well, because the guy, one of the singers' name is Sean Stockman. Yeah. So he's an SS. Yeah. So he loves secret scientists. Because of the Because of the SS. Man. Yeah, I can go to any. So I Sean can, got you on. I can go to any Boys to Men concert. That's whenever. wild. Um I actually tried to book him to come sing at my wedding, but he had a Vegas show. Wow. Um so we go to that that spectrum. I mean, uh athletes, I just the other day. Uh, what's gonna call it? One of Tyron Matthews' homies hit me up. Yeah, because he was at a family reunion with one of my people in New Orleans, and so he's gonna get stuff. Um, but our, our spectrum ranges so much to the point where, like Blanco Brown, who's got the number yeah. one country song in the world from last year, he yeah. loves our brand. So I think people see. I mean, you got to think they're gonna go look at social media, mm-hmm. and our social media is solidified right now. Yeah, you know, it says nine stores, twenty five thousand followers. They see us putting stuff out every single week. So the average person is going to be like, okay, cool. Why would I not want any free clothes? You know, it kind of, you just got to pick, like, um, determine and figure out who you want to send it to. Because if it's somebody like the Migos and stuff, you know, they're designer down, yep. chains all day. Yep. Why would I reach out to They're not wearing for the And they're starting to design they're down They're not wearing clothes. $30, $40 t shirts for real, for real. Yeah. Uh, and they're definitely not posting it. They're only posting the big buck stuff. Yeah. Um, so it really just depends. I mean, we've got a couple athletes. We just talked to, uh, I can't even think of his name, guy from the Clippers just wrote us. Uh, he wanted some pieces. So mm-hmm. you just come across certain people. And like I said, but I'm just very, very, like, I'm a stickler. If you don't tag my brand, you won't ever be getting another Has picture. Boogie talked to you yet? Cousin? Yeah. Uh-uh. I've actually reached out to Boogie a couple of times. He just didn't, I don't know if he didn't read it or respond. Okay. Or Has Blue talked to you yet? Blue actually shopped with me. Okay. Um, Blue didn't really want much free stuff. He actually wanted to support business. Yeah, I've heard he's um, like that. So Blue, I mean, of course, No Cap, like him and Foreign will come over here. No Cap's just such a good, such a good kid. I love No Cap. Um, <laughs> but as a person, I've had numerous conversations with him as a person. Yeah. Rilo's bought hats from me before. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, in Mobile, we're pretty, pretty good. Let did a photo shoot for us before. Yeah. Um, another person that I like a lot, Let. But I also meet a lot of people, and I don't talk to them about music. You know, we just talk about, like, life, life yeah. and stuff. So I think a lot of people are drawn to me because I'm not asking them for anything. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to get a photo shoot out of them. Yeah. I just talk to them like regular people, and I think they just respect that, where I'm not, like, googly eyes fan mm-hmm. type stuff i'm just treating them like regular people um and i think sometimes i'm like a breath of fresh air for some of these people because mm-hmm. i'm not most people are trying to get over on them or get something out of it mm-hmm. so that blue check stuff is it's cool and all but i mean what's crazy is what you're describing is the reason why you're even doing this un- interview for me right you was basically telling because you know when we speak we talk talk yeah right? we ain't just I, I, trust me, I don't do, I don't do, I, before, yeah, when you asked me, I told you I wasn't doing any more podcasts, like no more interviews, no more nothing. I just knew you were going to ask me different questions. There's only mm-hmm. so many times that you can tell your story, plus I put out a book. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you can just go buy the book on my website and read all about me and all the questions that you have. So I'm not going to play myself either. Go buy the book. You yeah. get all the answers you need. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Yeah, simple as that. If you don't want to pay $15, then you didn't care that much about your brand anyway. <laughs> and if you don't have fifteen dollars, you don't need to be having a brand anyway because you yes. can't buy bulk anyway. Yes, you can buy two. Yes, and trust me, it don't go good when you have the clientele like what you got and you don't know how to get it. Yeah, you know. So, yeah. so for me, it's just nah. But like I said, the blue checks are cool. We we try to work with certain people to make sure that people see our brand because, of course, when people put it to the masses, mm-hmm. you know, if, of course, if I could get Drake a shirt, I'd send it to him. You yeah, know what I'm saying it doesn't matter. I might gain a hundred thousand followers. Yeah, if Drake posts me, you know. Um, so it, right now we're to the point where we're like very selective on who we want to send it to mm-hmm. because we do have such like a brand image where we want to make sure like if you're into some like foolishness, mm-hmm. we can't really work with you right now. Mm-hmm. It's cool, but all money ain't good money. You're right. Um, but it, it's kind of like trial and error. Food. Some people reach out to us we've never even heard of. There's people on Instagram with a million followers with a blue check and I've never even heard of them. Mm-hmm. And it's just the wildest thing in the world to me. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. You know, so they'll send it and say, hey, I need this or hey, I want to wear your stuff. And I look them up and I'm just like, I ain't even heard of you. But, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, who knows? I mean, I'm sure everybody hasn't heard of certain people in Mobile that are artists and they got a million followers. Yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, you, you we do things in our market and it just depends on where you want to go. And I mean, but we, we've, our blue checks is like skateboarders to rappers to yeah. chefs to yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Well, plus with me, I don't really know what I'm ever going to not want to do. Mm-hmm. So I always make sure I have somebody in every single industry that can make my event or whatever I'm trying to do look good. That makes sense. I can hit up a professional skateboarder right now and he'll come to my event. Because he wears my stuff. Man, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? And so if I want to throw a concert, a rap concert, I can just go in my DMs. If mm-hmm. I want to do a cooking show, I can go in my DMs. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't really know what I'm ever going to want to do. My yeah. mind is all over the place. But that's because you're a creative. Yeah, you know? So for me, I know I know the things that I want to do, but I know there's going to be things in a year or two that I'm probably going to want to do that I'm not doing right now, and I mm-hmm. need to make sure that I'm straight. Because regardless, it's got to be still got to be Instagrammable. Yes. <laughs> if, it, if it ain't Instagrammable, ain't nobody going to see it or wear it or whatever anyway. The name, yeah. of, the, the name of the day is I got to take a picture of what I got on or what I'm eating or, mm-hmm. or where I'm going. And if nobody's posting your stuff, that means your stuff's not hot. That's exactly what's happening. And it's not to knock anybody else, but... These are, we these wanna, are bars these to are, go for. You want to get tagged yeah. all day, every day. You know, yeah. our secret scientist timeline is story after story after story after story because we always just reshare our customers. Mm-hmm. You know, people love getting reshared. Yeah. Um, and they're going to reshare your share. Yeah. So for me, now I'm on your timeline twice. Yeah. So I had to think about it like that. Instead of why would I not share you? Because if I share you, you're going to reshare me. Mm-hmm. So instead of only one timeline seeing it, they saw your timeline, then my timeline, then your timeline again. Yeah. Three is always better than one when it comes to visibility. Say, that's the number of God. All right. So look, I would be remiss if we closed out without talking about SS for everyone. Okay. So what's this initiative? What are you trying to do? Um, so for my SS for Everyone campaign, I wanted people to see, especially in a segregated and split city like Mobile, mm-hmm. that everybody can come together and do something and support one mission if it's about like bettering people as a whole. Yeah. So what we do is we highlight a business every single week, not even clothes. We've done power washers, chefs, um, architects, mm-hmm. just highlighting people in Mobile that are doing big things that some people may not notice or are noticing but aren't getting the recognition that they deserve there's these stupid awards in mobile and magazines that nobody even reads and these these top 50 people in mobile aren't the top 50 people in mobile they paid for that ad space Mm. so why are you saying these are the top 50 influential people a you've only got three or four black out of the 50 that makes no sense when mobile is majority black now yes um secondly I'm making more money than people in that book. <laughs> I'm doing more for the city than people in that book. Yeah. So why are you not reaching out to me and be one of the top 50 in, in Mobile? I got to be top 10 right now. So they didn't even reach out. I've never been in a magazine, been in an article. The Lanyard lany- lany- wrote me and I was like, I'm not doing it unless I'll get the cover. And yeah. they were like, well, the cover is very coveted. Again, I'm not doing this unless I get the cover. This is the Lanyard and I'm not trying to knock the Lanyard if y'all are listening to this, but I'm yeah. reaching more people than y'all are. Um. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I just decided to create my own, and that's mm-hmm. kind of why my brand. I opened up all these stores because I've heard so many no's, where people don't want to believe in you, and we're from the South, and we're from Alabama, and nobody mm-hmm. cares about the South for real. And so I said, I'm gonna just do my own thing. You know, people love those Nappy Awards. That's cool, but not really. It's just a popularity contest. Mm-hmm. Whoever gets the most votes win. It has nothing to do with your work. True. Literally, all you that, do is you go, is. You you go, go vote, vote every vote single, day. single day. Whoever gets Speaking the vote, vote nappy. You know, com. <laughs> you know, at, the, at the end of the day, so nappy awards. They one year they did best men's boutique. The boutique that won went out of business that year. How are they the best b- men's boutique? You're right. So the best men's boutique went out of business. That wasn't the best. How, how was that the best? Or either that or they was doing bad business. And now they don't even do best men's boutique anymore. They don't. It's not a category. It's not a category anymore. And so for me, it's just like, okay, you got rid of the category that I was going to get in. It's fine. I'm just going to make my own. Mm-hmm. My SS for Everyone event had 200 people there. Yes, it did. People networked. I got a friend of mine that invested in a brand and a person that he met at the event. So I did, my ju- I did the justice for the city. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, if they're not giving us the opportunity i'm just gonna create my own wave i don't care 
You know, nobody's reading these magazines in Mobile. Mm -hmm. People, I, we, people get in the lane, you have to go pack and move to put paper around their dishes. <laughs> it's, and it just, and it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like, when the last time you read one? I ain't never read it. When the last time you read a local magazine? Oh. <laughs> yeah. It was a dollar and fifty. And it's not to knock what on they're, a Sunday. It's not to knock what they're doing. They're just out of touch. And I was looking for a job. Then well, they're not allowing the city to progress and people always say they want progression in Mobile. Well, how? Y'all aren't doing anything different. At some point, it's gotta be a city that has so much potential to it either has it or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. We've been saying it has potential. Our parents said it has potential. The kids under us says it has potential. Maybe it's just as mobile and doesn't have any more potential than what y'all want it to be. And that's what it is. What they There's want. not enough money. There's not enough people. Y'all want to be Atlanta. Mobile got 170,000 people. Atlanta has millions. How can we be Atlanta? It's not possible. Unless you start letting people come down here and do some things. But even still, it's still never going to be Atlanta. Y'all need to be more realistic and say, we just need to be a better Mobile. Yeah. That's all we need to be is a better mobile. Let's bring some things to make the city better. And then maybe we can have half a million people. And mm -hmm. then there's more money. And then there's more jobs. Mm -hmm. But people want mobile to go from 170 to 5 million. It's not gonna do it that. doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. You know, but also the avenues and the people that are focused on don't give other people the opportunity. That's exactly it. And so for me, I just say for the SS for everyone, I'm going to create my own platform. I've got a bigger platform and I'm going to mm -hmm. highlight the businesses that I want to highlight mm -hmm. that aren't paying me to get highlighted. Mm -hmm. We don't make anybody pay for us. You know, we, we reach out to people all the time and give them like, hey, we want to do an SS for everyone with you. Mm -hmm. Cool. I don't ask for anything back. I just want your business to grow because the more other businesses grow for Mobile, mm -hmm. my business is going to grow. That's right. And if I'm going to be in Mobile, I might as well try to make it as best as I can and not complain. Mm -hmm. People are always like, there's nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. Well, I can't tell because my timeline be lit every weekend. <laughs> 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 you just got to make it. You just got to make the most of where you at. And if yeah. you don't like Mobile, then just leave. Save up and move and leave. But if you're here, there's no point in complaining because then the complaining causes people to be mad and angry and fight and shoot. And because all you have is this negative connotation and these negative feelings in the atmosphere mm -hmm. where nobody's happy because you hate where you live. I don't hate where I live. I enjoy every moment in Mobile because I have realistic expectations. Yeah. And so people don't have realistic expectations about the city and what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so they, they set themselves up for failure. I can see that. You know, so, so for me, the SS for Everyone campaign was just to highlight other local businesses. I'm good. I'm mm -hmm. established. But why would I not? put other people on and, and at least let people see, oh, I need a caterer, I can go to this person. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need a power wash, I can go to this person. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need this and this, I can go to, let me go check in Tony's page and see, because I know he's done it, he talked about it with other people. Yeah. And so that's just kind of where I was, because a lot of people don't get the attention that they deserve. And it's really unfortunate that Mobile is so out of the loop that they don't really know the top 50 influential people in the city. In the city. They just freestyle and make people pay for ads. Because uh, honestly, I knew what really turned me off was I saw this girl, top 50 under 50. And it's not to knock this girl, but I know her. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, she made the list? <laughs> <laughs> That's who made the list? I know where she works. I know where she does. I know where she parties. Not great. Congratulations to the girl for making the list. Yeah. But this is the list? All right, cool. Because honestly, that top 50 list, personally, it should be people that if I see them, they could change my life. Well, a lot of people to me don't, they only want to like keep everything to themselves. And I think they know if they invite me into these rooms, I'm going to be like, why y'all ain't got no black people? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, and my wife is white and everybody yeah. knows that. But I am pro-black to death my wife is a, a beautiful woman to me we have a beautiful son i love my wife to death mm -hmm. but i still know that people the black people need to be in rooms yes and so i'm gonna always fight for like black people mm -hmm. white people already have the head start mm -hmm. so no matter no matter what i know my son is half black and he's still gonna be handled like a black man yes he is so i still have to raise him as a black man yeah and i've just been blessed enough to have a wife that understands that things are different between black and white and she's not, not naive to the situation where white people don't get it. She actually gets it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I think they just know I'm going to ask what took y'all so long. Yeah. 
why why didn't y'all put me in this one? So they probably just don't want to ask certain questions to certain people. But yeah, I'm gonna ask them like, hey, and then I'm gonna also ask the other black people that were in it before me and be like, y'all didn't ask about this? Yeah. And I think a lot of people just don't want to hear those questions, but I'm gonna ask. I have nothing to lose. Yeah. And I think maybe some people have something to lose. I have nothing to lose in a bunch of local magazines that didn't ever highlight our business. But no, I'm going to put my own SS for everyone. And I'm at 25 businesses now. Mm-hmm. And we get emails every single day about businesses that want to do an SS for everyone because other businesses are getting highlighted. Mm-hmm. Because uh, people aren't talking about their brand and things like that. But the thing is unfair. And if I've got the avenue to do it, why not? Hey, and that's how you keep getting those blessings you were talking about earlier. That's how those prayers keep getting answered. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You are being an upstanding citizen, an upstanding black man, representing your culture, representing your people. And you are still trying to unify all people, mm-hmm. you know, and that's a beautiful thing. God will always honor It just doesn't make any sense to walk into a room and see somebody that only has a different skin complexion and be scared. It's just weird. It is weird. And it's taught. And it's taught. And also, you don't think that I feel weird when I'm the only black person in this room? Boy, it's ultra weird. <laughs> It's so weird. It's happened to me so many times, And I got times, on man. sweatpants and a t-shirt, and you yeah. got on suits, and you're wondering who this thug is? Yeah. Now, trust me, I feel just as weird as y'all do. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I, I, my parents never raised me to, like, judge people just based on appearance. And I think when you work in retail long enough, you realize that lady that may look like a bum to you probably got more money than that person that was all flashy and just spent 100 bucks. Yeah. You got to service everybody the same. And I think that's the blessing that comes out of retail is you have to realize that everybody's the same when they walk in these doors. Mm-hmm. Treat people treat people how you want to be treated. And that's what I teach the managers here. Just treat your staff how you want to be treated. And that's how we go about our business. And that is why your business is so big. Well, hey, this has been a Vivid Mind podcast. Uh, if you want to know the five secret reasons that will help you be successful make sure you subscribe to our patreon find us on there and i just want to let you know live humble and prosper When I hustle up or don't have a dime, I'm a gold mine. Good times and the bad times, they heavy on my mind. Taper it up or I'm starched down. Either way is mine. I feel fine, but everything around affect my vivid mind.